When looking at our past cultures, it seldom recognized how much the head covering dominated the apparel of women, even Christian women. The Bible's first mentions of veiled women are vague, yet clear enough to assume that a head covering was normal for at least the married women. Face veils are mentioned in the scriptures about Rebekah and Tamar. In Numbers 5, 11 through 31, referred to as the law of jealousy, an accused woman's hair is to be unbound. In the book of Isaiah, an unmarried woman's hair is uncovered to her shame. Women may have covered their heads in ancient times for modesty, as religious Jews still do today. Islam adopted the modest dress of the early Jewish and Christian women in the Middle East. The result being that ancient clothing styles and the veiling practice have persisted in the Middle East almost unchanged for thousands of years. In India, married women wore a veil on their heads and can often be seen doing so still. Even ancient Assyria had laws on women's head coverings, making it obvious that the practice is very ancient and widespread. Greek and Roman art and literature indicate that head coverings were worn, but not necessarily enforced. There was certainly a bridal veil ritual and enough other mentions to believe that married women were expected to go about veiled on the street, both for modesty and to show married status. Vestal virgins wore veils as a symbol of chastity, but other Roman religious events required unveiling. The Apostle Paul gave the authoritative discourse on head coverings for the followers of the Messiah when he wrote 1 Corinthians 11. He gives more reasons than the traditional modesty of it and explains the symbolism of the authority structure demonstrated by head covering. As Christianity spread through Europe, church leaders were unanimous in asserting that, at least during religious gatherings, the married women must keep their heads veiled. During the earliest days, both married and unmarried women were thoroughly covered. Often, even small girls were veiled. As fashions changed and morals loosened, women wore smaller and smaller head coverings. Eventually, the veil was discarded and only the cap was retained. Letting hair show at all used to be considered shockingly immodest for adult ladies, but in time, people grew accustomed to seeing the new styles. Wealthy women of fashion and girls that were trying to attract a husband often went with hair exposed, especially to social events. To have your hair showing gave the impression of youth, since it used to be that you would only see young girls with an uncovered head. Among the lower classes and very pious women, to whom fashion held less importance, full-time wearing of the head covering persisted. As the centuries rolled by, women were wearing their head coverings less and less often, going from full-time veiling to subtle caps, to putting on their bonnets only when going out in public and to church. Discussing theology in front of ladies was considered impolite in the Victorian era. Women were forgetting the religious aspect of the head covering and saw it as merely proper. The Catholic Church's Code of Canon Law required women to cover their heads in church as late as 1917. In other denominations also, women wore their hats when in church and in public places. In the 1960s, during the social revolution, when cultural and religious norms were being challenged, women stopped wearing their hats in church altogether. The second wave of feminism had promoted new attitudes toward women's roles and apparel. The head covering has persisted among conservative denominations. Some still teach women to wear head coverings full time, not just when in church. Across America and Europe, individuals in non conservative churches and some who worship at home are re adopting the head covering. Something that has gone out of fashion is regaining recognition by Bible believers today.